I'd like to just get your thoughts on are this, uh, the founder of Telegram, Pavel Durov, was arrested in France. Now, I don't actually use Telegram, but I know you use it a lot. This seems like, a, why was he arrested? Who, 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 who was behind it? And what are the implications going to be of something like okay, this? Okay, well, he was arrested in France. He flew there, I think, from Azerbaijan in a private jet. And he was arrested upon landing. I think he had had reason. He wouldn't have flown there if he thought that he was at risk for arrest. Apparently, he's a fairly cautious guy. And he said, like, hey, there's no point to spend time in jail. Um, but I I believe that the warrant was issued shortly before he arrived and, and secretly. So he was taken by surprise. This was He wasn't aware that there was a warrant for his arrest. Um, or I guess it is maybe the technical term is a detention. They haven't actually made a decision on whether or not they're going to bring charges against him at this point. Um, but the the charges that we've that have been reported, you know, the potential charges are I guess facilitating pedophilia, drug drug trafficking, and um, I think there's a third which uh, slips my mind right now. I mean they're very serious charges, and it's it's hard to really understand how these charges could be brought against him unless there's something about him that we don't know, but I doubt it. Um, I think the argument is going to be made, you know, we'll find out for sure, you know, when, when the charges are brought or if they're brought, you know, exactly what, what they're claiming, but they're probably going to claim that because he failed to, let's say, you know, um, police the content on his platform telegram adequately that uh, the pedophiles and drug traffickers and other criminals were able to commit their crimes and so therefore he himself is guilty um, now this is again we don't know the details yet so we can't jump to conclusions you know maybe the, the French really do have something on him but I, I'm very skeptical about it um, the um, you know, first, the, the argument that, well, because it was done on his platform, he's guilty. Well, you just think, you know, by analogy, you could say, well, a, a criminal calls another criminal on the phone. It, it, maybe they arrange it over the phone. Well, therefore, is the telephone company, the president of the telephone company needs to be jailed. I mean, I, th I think that's a, a, a fair comparison right there. That's mm -hmm. a fair analogy. Um, and then you say, well, if he was... If he had been requested by law to, you know, he's asked to conform to certain local laws and he didn't, okay, well, then I, I don't think that, you know, that this is something, a jailable offense, but he, you, you could say, okay, he needs to be penalized or his company does. I mean, that's usually the way that you deal with something like that. Like if, if Google is, you find they're in violation of some law, you don't actually jail the, the CEO of, of Google, right? And and threaten them with 20 years in prison, you, you fine Google for failing to uh, comply with certain regulations. But it, it seems to me that that Telegram was trying to, they in general did comply with regulations. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example that often I'll get, um, like a, I, I subscribe to Mark Sloboda's Telegram channel and he'll post something, maybe that's on RT or that's on Sputnik. And then I'll, I won't be able to see it because it says, you know, I'll get a telegram message that says this post uh, does not comply with local laws. And, you know, therefore you cannot see it. So hmm. they do actually, he, he's not a First Amendment absolutist. Sometimes when you read the papers, it's like, yeah, I don't care about any laws. You can, no, he actually does comply with laws, you know, with, with, with local laws. So I don't know exactly what the French are going to claim. Now, Macron just came out and said that this has nothing to do with politics. It's just purely a judicial investigation. And, uh, and, and that's that. Now, maybe that's true, but I'm just very skeptical. I think that you know, what we're seeing here is, is, is something that's driven by the intelligence community. They understand. Uh, Telegram is a is a major platform. I think it has a billion users, and a, and it's very it's a very big platform here in Russia. You know, virtually every Russian has Telegram. Um, it's been a very important platform in connection with the uh, the Ukraine war. 
There are both Ukrainian, many Ukrainian, many Russian channels, war bloggers on both sides that use Telegram. Um, but this is something that is beyond the reach of, of Western intelligence. And uh, that's something that Pavel um, himself, you know, Pavel Urov himself stated in a recent interview with Tucker Carlson. He said that they, he's being pressured by, by the CIA, by Western intelligence, to provide a backdoor. They want to be able to access his da data, and he said no. And I think that's probably why they're after him. Just like they were, I think it's the same reason that the U.S. is, is trying to shut down TikTok. And something that they don't have a backdoor to. Google does, you know, if Facebook, Meta, all that. You can be sure that they're, they're cooperating with with uh, Western intelligence, in particular with the CIA and the NSA. So, so what is the goal then with arresting him? Just to damage to Telegram? On. To pressure well, him to also, take yeah, Telegram say, down? I mean, like, what what's the goal? Yeah. Well, to I, to, to I scare it's... people from speaking, uh, you know, to the have a chilling well, effect, or yeah, well, yeah, there's that too. You know, he's been he's been quite open, like he was in that that interview with Tucker Carlson. He says, "I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to provide this secret backdoor to the CIA." But I think they they want it. You know, it would be a huge prize for them. Well, one thing is, it would be a great way to collect data on activities of all kinds of of Russians, and I'm sure they would. I, you know, that's, that's something they could do with. They would love to track the actions and attitudes of Russian individuals. And uh, that's exactly the sort of thing that an intelligence agency does. And by arresting him, they can they can threaten him, you know, say, hey, look, it's 20 years. Or maybe, but if you cooperate with us in this way, um, you know, you know, maybe we can reduce the or we will reduce the charges to a, a year or just probation or you know how it works wow that's crazy it's it's straight up mafia tactics oh yeah know? but i mean this is this is what happens i i you know again we don't know all the details now but that's what i suspect i very strongly suspect that that's what's going on right i i heard the founder of rumble has fled europe as well because right. he's like uh oh basically it just it's it's so crazy that the west is going after people advocates of free speech you know, if it be there, there's information there that the government doesn't like, so they will arrest you, force you to, you know, comply or throw you in jail. That that's uh -huh. it. This is it. Just we've gone full circle. You know, it's like we 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 defeated the Soviet Union, and now we've become the new Soviet Union. You know, it's right. like we we are controlling as the information space as much as possible. Yeah, and and you wonder like they they start with these big tech companies, but how far does it go? You know, just us having these types of conversations, should we start to be worried at some point? I mean, I guess that's the chilling effect that they hope the, that it uh -huh. might have as well. Do you think this is going to, they're, they're going to succeed with this or do you think it will backfire? Um, well, it could. I mean, you think about it, there was actually a threat um, on on the part of, was, was it Starmer or was some other British politician to, I think it was Starmer himself to have, Elon Musk arrested for allowing the wrong kinds of opinions on on X. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, I actually just forgot your question. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just wondering: Do you think that this they're actually going to succeed with this, or do you think it will backfire on them? Or the... well, I mean, the state has a lot of power, um, but these. Yeah, these new, you could call them kind of, uh, I, well, maybe not IT oligarchs, but, you know, these, um, the owners of these mega platforms, they have a lot of power, too. It, it'll just, it'll be interesting. You know, clearly, Elon Musk has been fighting battle. There, there have been all kinds of efforts to bring him down. So far, he's done pretty well, but he hasn't ended up in jail. Um, I imagine... <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I, you know, it does look bad for France, and I imagine that there's, and again, there already have been protests, for example, in in front of the French embassy in Moscow, and uh, I know, like in Russia, they're printing like "Bring Pavel Home" T-shirts and that kind of thing. It's not just in Russia, though, because you know it, he's a Russian, but it, 
Telegram is a lot larger than that. He's not actually a supporter of Putin or of the Russian government either. So he has widespread support, and it may be that that some of that support, you know, some uh, uh, that the that the French government will feel some pressure, you know. But I don't know if it's strong enough pressure to to counter the the authority of the U.S. government, and I. Again, I suspect that that's where this is coming from. It's coming from the CIA. Just the, every day that goes by, I feel like we, the U.S. does more and more to paint itself clearly as the bad guy. You know, we were supposed to be the champion of free speech and you know a democracy, and we're just just such it's such a sham. It's it's so becoming so clear now, and I I understand it takes a while for people to see to realize that hey, America is not number one anymore, or is not the good guy. But it's just like, come on, people, open your eyes, see what's happening. I mean, just look at the Democratic Party right now, where everybody's running on this <laughs> platform of joy with Kamala Harris, who hasn't done a single unscripted interview since she's been just randomly nominated. She's never won a single, you know, never got a single delegate vote. And everybody is just full on behind her, all in lockstep. It's just, it, it, it feels... Like what I imagined, what Maoist China was, like everybody's on the party. Yes, we follow these lines. Everybody agrees and we all cheer, say, we all talk. Yeah. The same. There's no dissent. Right. You know, right. Well, I'll give is... you an example. It's just that it, it, I think it was uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got a message from my friend Chip back in Tennessee. And it was like, is this Vance guy weird or what? And I said, like, well, that's a weird off the wall question. And then I, I, I think quite seriously, like an hour later, I read an article about how um, everyone, you know, like all the um, talking heads and the major media outlets were were just harping on one theme, and that was that J.D. Vance was weird. And they were using that word again and again and again. And I saw it, just, so it was working, you know, but it's, that's the kind of thing that happens. So like before, when they, when they were trying to de defend Biden, he was sharp as attack. He was sharp as attack. Sharp as, they were all using the same phrase. And then finally, that just didn't work anymore. So they dropped it, and they had to get rid of him. But now it's like J.D. Vance is weird. J.D. Vance is weird. Now and now the joy of you know uh, these kind of words are being used. To, you, yeah, just just I emotions. Mean, in the New York, just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's nothing that nobody's talking no, no, about policy, right? <laughs> right. Because there is no policy, or the policy is yeah, right. just so garbage that they don't even yeah. want to present it. So they just say this is a joy platform, yeah. and we say J.D. Right. Vance is weird. But it's just amazing how they they just go. They take their marching orders. It's so clear that that's what the. the yeah. The Democrat Party really has become the deep state. Like, look, I don't like. I'm not a big fan of Trump. I'm not. I'm not a big MAGA guy. I, there, there's a lot of. There's there's a lot of problems there, especially like the support for for Israel. Netanyahu and Israel right. is is a real. It's it's a painful thing to to realize right. that this to is observe, how our political yeah. system is right yeah. to observe. But at least within the Demo the, the the Republican Party, there there is some dissent. Like, if you watch the RNC and the DNC. The RNC, there were people that were saying things that disagreed with the person that spoke before. And it was kind of nice to see, like, okay, at least in this platform, on this party, they allow for alternative opinions and they talk about different things, different policies. Whereas in the DNC, it's like, no, everybody has to be ironclad. Yeah. We stay in lockstep. Right. There's no yeah. dissent allowed. You know, it's just, I think, yeah, it's the, creepy. The way they yeah, I think the way they justify it is that, okay, is that Trump is Hitler, and and so therefore everything is justified in preventing Hitler from taking power again. And so that yeah, if we if we need to lie, if we need to dumb everything down to just three words, we'll do it. Yeah, if, and, if, and if we have to enforce um, mind-numbing uniformity through our party, we'll do it because we have to defeat Hitler. It's just like this is this is war. Right, if, you know, we got to put on our uniforms and we got to go and fight and defeat this this threat to democracy. Of course, that's the language they use. I mean, democracy is on the line here. We've got to save our democracy, and and to save our democracy, we got to squelch dissent, and we've got to just become, you know, lower IQs down to again maybe three or four words and just repeat them incessantly. Right. And, and of course, have no semblance of any democracy within our own party. You know, nobody gets to choose or vote or have any say. We're just this is the we're just nominating this person. 
Um, it's wild. 